Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. We're in Addis Abeba for the summit of the African Union and our guest today is the Palestinian Prime Minister Mohamed Shtaye. Thank you very much for being our host. Thank you for having me. Mr. Prime Minister, uh, the observer status of Israel has been one of the main topics of debate. Uh, the head of the African Union Commission decided to grant Israel this observer status uh, back in uh, July. Do you believe uh, that uh, this will not go through? Well, um, obviously, there are procedural issues <clears throat> that have to be respected. And, you know, Palestine has been an observer since 1974. So we have excellent working relationship with the African Union. And now that somebody has proposed uh, Israel to be an observer, we have heard so many rejections for this idea. And the majority of the African countries don't actually support that. But the decision-making process at the African Union is based upon consensus. There is no voting. And therefore, I think uh, there is no majority whatsoever that supports this idea. Therefore, I think uh, the idea will be just simply, it will evade away. Uh, was it important uh, for you uh, to come here and, and explain why you think this is a mistake? Some could say observer status is not such a big deal. Why is it a big deal? Well, it's just simply because, you know, to have Israel as a observer member of the African Union, it's, a mar it's, it's about rewarding Israel for doing something. At this time, Israel is actually not doing anything positive. It's all what Israel is doing is all the negatives and distractions. Look at it. The Israeli government, the, the prime minister of Israel is talking about three no's. No to talks with President Abbas, no to negotiation with the Palestinian leadership, and no to two-state solution. And not only that. This morning, they have announced the construction of around 5,000 settlement units. The uh, colonization program is intensifying. The checkpoints, the surrounded city of Jerusalem, the isolation of Gaza, all the measures on the ground, settler terrorism, uprooting trees. So what is it that Israel is doing positive so that it will be rewarded for becoming an observer member of the African Union? There isn't really anything. And that is what the African countries are saying. The Israeli government has no positive attitude at all. Not only that, the African Union has its own principles that they are for peace and justice, end of occupation, end of discrimination, and then of, an end of apartheid. Look at the Amnesty International report. Only two days ago, Amnesty International has explicitly stated that Israel is an apartheid state. The Human Rights Watch report, what did they say a few months ago? That Israel is an apartheid state. What did the Beit Salem, an Israeli foundation, what did they say? They said that Israel is an apartheid state. So it this was is, a mistake. So this is Africa. When you talk about apartheid state, in African, for the African countries, nobody will understand why is it that Israel is brought to be an observer member of the African Union at a time when the whole international organizations are saying that Israel is an apartheid state. You mentioned the Israeli Prime Minister Naftali uh, Bennett. Uh, is he, with regards to the Palestinian issue, worse than his predecessor Benjamin Netanyahu, who you vividly criticized? Well, uh, you know, we haven't heard any positive statement from the Prime Minister of Israel. None, one single positive statement. He there is... have been some contacts, though, with President Abbas. No, not with Bennett. But with ministers. With, with Minister Gantz and with some talks with Minister, Foreign Minister Labid. This Israeli government is a troika. It has three heads. Some ministers are better than others. The issue is not about ministers. The issue is not about individual positions. The issue is about government policy. The question for us is, what is the government policy? The government policy of Israel is about settlements, more settler, settler violence, uprooting trees, all done under the uh, supervision of the Israeli army. So therefore, I think Israel needs to do a lot of work to uh, come to trust of the international community, which has not been materialized yet. And therefore, the African countries have made their voice loud and clear that Israel, under these circumstances, no way that Israel will be an observer st state at the African Union. What about the Biden administration? What have they done? Are you disappointed? President Biden made a huge jump 
and a serious departure from the Trump administration. We reconnected with them. We had an excellent uh, working relationship with them from day one. The, the administration has made promises in their election campaign. And also they, they did reinforce these uh, promises in the phone call between President Biden and President Abbas and when uh, Secretary Blinken visited Ramallah and we had a very positive meeting with him. So the promises that were made, we are waiting for it to materialize uh, uh, soon. It didn't materialize yet. Only one important item, which is refunding ANARWA. This is important for us. There are issues that has to do with reopening the American consulate in Jerusalem. This is for us a very important issue because it is about two states. But they haven't delivered, Mr. Prime Minister. There, there's a lot of talk, not much action, to be blunt. Not yet. You're still hoping that this... We are still hoping that they will move forward. But frankly, while the reality on the ground is deteriorating, you know, uh, Mark, the Biden administration believes in two states. The question for us, if you do believe in two states, how do you preserve the two states from it being eroded? So there is, the Israeli government is employing systematic destruction of two states. What is needed from the Biden administration and from the international community is to protect a two-state solution. Is it still alive? Seriously, I mean, I know there'll be a meeting of the Palestinian Central Council uh, probably to discuss the issue. Should we stick to two states or say, well, let's forget about this? I think you are right. The reality on the ground, there is, as I said, systematic destruction of two states. At the political level, it is still possible, it is doable. There are so many fait accomplis that Israel has created on the ground, including settlements, that, uh, that can be reversed. So, politically, two states is still alive. On the ground, there is systematic destruction. What is needed is a third-party intervention. United States, the Quartet, to really come up with a statement to protect two states, not only as a statement, but also to push the Israelis to stop destroying the two-state solution. And I think that is what is lacking at the moment. The problem today is that we live in a political vacuum. Nobody is fulfilling that vacuum. And I think that the only qualified body that can really fulfill this political vacuum is the Quartet. Europe, United Nations, United States, and the Russian Federation. Last uh, issue, uh, the normalization between Israel, Morocco, the United Arab Emirates. We see lots of official trips, lots of uh, commercial deals, arms deals. This is a slap in the face of the Palestinians because people thought this was only about Trump. But under Biden, it's continuing and developing. Well, I mean, it started under Trump and it started that Trump was the champion for all of this. For us, the issue of normalization is a violation of Arab League uh, decisions and resolutions. You know, we had the Arab League uh, and the Arab Peace Initiative that explicitly stated that Arabs are ready to normalize relations with Israel on the condition that Israel will end occupation of the Palestinian and Arab territories that have been occupied in 1967. This has not been really happening. So there are this sort of deviation from Arab Peace Initiative. Uh, the Arab Betrayals. Summit... The Arab summit that is uh, coming to be uh, uh, held in Algeria, uh, hopefully soon, will discuss this issue that has to do with Arab Peace Initiative, that has to do with the question of Palestine. Frankly, you know, we all the time counted on our, uh, on, on our, our Arab brothers. They betrayed you. They have, they have been... You don't want to use the word. No, they have been really, I mean, obviously the cause of Palestine has been hurt and... Uh, Forgotten. Uh, we hope that uh, this situation will be corrected very soon. An Arab summit will try to correct the situation because, look, we want to ask the following question. You are the ones, the Arab countries are the ones who decided on the Arab Peace Initiative. Do you want it or you don't want it? Do you want to respect it or you don't want to respect it? If you don't want to respect it, tell us. If you want to respect it, tell us so that at least Wherever, you win, wherever we want to go, let's go together. Let's, let's not go, you know, one by one, and then the whole idea is fully and totally broken. Last question. As a conclusion, you see these Arab states uh, making peace and business uh, with Israel. The Biden administration is not uh, moving. Europe is busy elsewhere. The quartet, you call for it, it hasn't been working for a while. 
I mean, do you still seriously believe in a two-state solution, Mr. Yes. Prime Minister? Yes, I do. I do. You know why? <laughs> because there is a Palestinian consensus about two states, even Hamas. There is an Arab consensus about two states. There is an international consensus. If you go to any European capital, everybody speaks about two states. So everybody believes. It took us 50, 50 years to make the idea of two states an international consensus, Arab consensus, and a Palestinian consensus. The, the issue is that, by all means, if we miss the opportunity for two states, we and the Israelis are slipping into a one-state reality. That will... How long? How long do we still have, realistically, Mr. Prime Minister? Well, the, the reality on the ground is actually taking us into a totally different direction. With the intensive, it all depends upon Israel. The intensification of the colonization program will accelerate the death of two-state solution. A slow in that direction will make it live longer. But the issue for us is that we are having a Central Council meeting tomorrow in which we will review all what we stand for and our relationship with Israel. The situation cannot continue. All what Israel wants, Israel does not want two states and Israel does not want one state. All what Israel wants is to maintain the status quo. We all know that the status quo is unsustainable. You cannot sustain it because it is a deteriorating reality. So therefore, we are hoping that the Quartet will hold a meeting very soon, call upon Israel to stop these sort of measures that are destroying two-state solution, and then come up with a totally different scenario. Otherwise, otherwise, we and the Israelis are slipping into a one-state reality in which, by all means, we are here in Africa, by all means, Israel will be an apartheid state, not only by action and policies, but by de facto and by de jure. And that is exactly what all international organizations are saying. So Israel has to decide. They want to continue to be an apartheid state or they want to sit down with the Palestinians and end the conflict. Prime Minister Mohammed Shtai, I want to thank you very much for appearing here on the Friends 24 interview. And thank you for watching it. Stay tuned for more news.